Hey there, I'm Lee from PlayGuitarAcademy.com. I help frustrated guitar players get back to getting better at the guitar. Uh, with so many frustrated self-taught players around, it's time to get real about learning guitar and find a better way. A better approach for learning guitar. What's the, what's the way most people start? They learn songs. They want to learn songs. Why? Because songs are awesome. Songs are great. I love playing songs. I like to have a whole lot of different songs at my disposal. You never know when a certain song will be right for a certain situation. So songs, it's a, they're a big draw for people who want to play the guitar. It's definitely the most popular way to start learning guitar or to be learning guitar when you're an intermediate or an advanced player. It doesn't matter. Songs is where it's at. There's good parts and bad parts about that. The song-based learning. There's some people that know hundreds and hundreds of songs. But are they in a good place? That's the question. So let's talk about the good. We had a lot of people um, helping out uh, with giving good and bad results uh, for the different ways of learning. Uh, this first way of learning songs. For the good we have, you get motivation. And this is at all stages too. When you learn a song that you wanted to play, so a few days ago or a day ago or a week ago, however long it takes you to learn the song, you didn't know it, you couldn't play it. And now you do. That's, that's adrenaline, man. That's the, you're ready to go. That's, you, it doesn't get any better than that. That's motivation. It keeps you moving forward. And this was from Chris. He said, uh, for Joey, if Joey's listening, it's something that's familiar. You're practicing songs and the, it's something that you know. So you're comfortable with what you're learning, which is very important. So you're motivated and you're comfortable. But the other thing that we're talking about, the good part of being of the song heavy approach to learning the guitar is you get a sense of accomplishment. You're learning and you're, you're, you have stages as you go and you can see that it's tangible. I have this song now. Now I have that. Now I have two songs. Now I have three songs. And then, you know, by the, point you have 10 songs and if you're good enough to to play those to play in front of people that's a set of music do that three times you have 30 songs there's a whole night of music and that's all you need right there so uh, accomplishment is very very important to keep people moving forward so songs are excellent for that motivation having something familiar to practice and a sense of accomplishment but there's a bad part to it too there's a part to staying and just practicing songs over and over and over again. The first part is you get into your, you get in over your head really, really quickly because there's a lot of shiny stuff out there. <laughs> there there's, there's some fantastic players and fantastic songwriters and it, it sounds so good. And I, yeah, and it, it's, it's so easy to listen to these songs and pick, I, I just want to play that song. Uh, if you don't have the skills, and we're going to talk a lot about skills in the next few minutes, if you don't have the skills to play those songs, there are certain things about those songs that you need to know to be able to play, to pull them off. And as in, in not just a beginner, in every stage, you, if you don't have those skills, you may not be aware that you need those skills in the first place until you start in on those songs and they keep going and keep going and keep going. Uh, it's so easy to get stuck, get off into the stuck in the rut right there. So you just keep trying to play this song, trying to play this song. You get frustrated, you get frustrated. And then before you know it, the guitar's put down. Uh, so, the next, the next one, frustration. You don't have the knowledge. You don't know what you're frustrated about. And sometimes it's hard to put that into words where you're frustrated. You, you're, you're playing these songs. You should be having fun, but you, you also have ears. You can hear that's not quite right. And I'm not sure why it's not working out right. So frustration is the next bad part of the song based approach. And then the last is the career beginner. And we've talked a lot about the career beginners. And this came up again this week uh, in one of the, the live streams this weekend. 
without acquiring skills and building skills and building your foundations, just learning songs over and over and over again, sometimes, and I've heard this in a lot of players, those, even though you're playing a different song, because you may not be able to play, you may not be able to play out of open position. And when you start learning songs, not all of them are in open position. There's, there are some great ones there, but by far more of them are out uh, uh, using bar chords across here. So you may be learning songs, but without re acquiring those skills, these songs all start to take on a sameness to them. It's kind of like you've been, you've been cooking lots of different meals and in every meal you use the same spices, the same ingredients. You've, you've all heard a few people like that. Is this the same song? Did they switch songs? You know, so, so that, that's the good and the bad of the song based song, heavy learning. But there's another student that I've had for years, not just one, but a type of student. And that's the dedicated student, the, the, the practicer, the person who is ate up with the guitar. They're, enjoy, they're loving what they're doing and they're practicing scales. They're practicing chords. They're, they're, they're um, devouring each thing, ate up with it. And there's a lot of good to that. Number one, it's orderly. Okay. Uh, the, um, when it's, when you've got a really structured routine, if, if you're the type of person that can sit down every day at a certain point, um, you start to see results quick. That's a good thing. So it's orderly. You get lots of repetition and we're going to talk about why repetition in the next section is really, really, really important. Repetition is, you know, the songs are full of repetition too. Uh, we're playing things that repeat. People like things that repeat. It's, it, it, you, you introduce them something new and then it gives them time to get used to it and get familiar with those sounds. So repetition is in the songs, but repetition is also the quickest way we can get to really knowing and really understanding the music that we're playing. We'll get, get to that a little bit more in the next section. So you've got lots of repetition when you're a dedicated student, when you're just practicing all the skills. And you have a lot of time to delve into a subject. You have a lot of time to uh, spend with uh, I, the F chord this week. So uh, one of the one of the, uh, I think it was was David. We were talking about playing the F chord in different ways of doing it. And when you have when you're when you're really uh, when you have a really good schedule down and you have set aside time and you're orderly with that, you can really, when you, you have all this time, you can really, uh, spend time doing adjustments. That's what I was looking for. Doing adjustments, working on finger placement, these things that you don't, when you're playing in a band and you're out there playing music, you don't have really a lot of time to work on those. So it's a great, it's, it's great for, for an orderly guitar player to get all these little things down. But if you're that kind of a player and you're not learning songs, it becomes a negative. And here's why. First thing is you can't see the forest through the trees. You can't pay attention to the overall picture. The reason why you're doing all this in the first place. And that is to play music, to have a conversation, okay, to, to relate to other people. And once you uh, get into the minutia of playing guitar, the patterns and the, the, the hand placement and all of those things, it's really easy to forget that the reason we're playing this is to have fun and to have a pleasurable experience, a soulful experience playing music, a back and forth between the performer and the listener, that conversation. And that is so important. And there's some things that you will learn for playing in front of a group of people or just playing between you and a friend that you, that, that you can't learn 
from a, a book, you know, uh, or from a video. There, there are some things that you find in the moment, maybe a, a, a look from one of the other players, you know, or a place that you were playing that you just didn't think anything of. And all of a sudden people start applauding for that. And you, you realize, oh my gosh, that really, that phrase that I did right there that I didn't think was anything is now getting across to everyone else. I need to focus on that. So, so there's certain things that you're going to uh, be able to uh, notice and nurture and grow that you would never know just from staying at home practicing, that you'd have to be around with other people listening or playing together. The, the next is not getting songs down, that songs that you want to play down. Uh, when, you're, when you've got a um, song-based approach and you have a goal, that lights a fire to make sure you have those songs. Oh, I've got, I've got a reason for playing guitar. And my reason is at the end of this week, I'm going to play these songs for these people. So you're going to get the songs down. And the other, the other thing that's bad about that is frustration. This happens tons, tons. Uh, you practice, you practice, you practice, you practice, you practice. You never feel like you're actually getting any better. You're not getting any feedback. I have, I, I call them, I'm thinking of one right now. It was just, just playing wonderful, wonderful things but they weren't getting any feedback. They, they come into the lesson and I'd say, Hey man, that sounds great. When are you going to go and play out? <laughs> you know, and right now nobody's playing out right now, but uh, you know, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. So, uh, so now we're practicing for that time when we're all able to get out there and play again. My idea is to get the best of both of these, to take the practicing and the, and the playing should sound familiar for a lot for a lot of you right here the practicing and the playing and combine them in a way that is paced and orderly and slow and steady this sounds like a no-brainer of course okay you got these people that all they do is learn songs but they don't really have the skills to do them and you have all these people who have great skills but they don't have any songs and they don't have any outlet to play the songs um it's a no-brainer, right? You think, oh, well, you just combine them. But very few people take this approach, and it's, it needs to be said. So my recommended practice, you all know, if you've listened to me for any amount of time, is a split routine. You have your practice for half of the time where you're working on things that don't sound so good, and then your play where you're working on repetition of things that sound good to your ear, that lift you up. Um, it's a slow and steady process. And when you're on a good path, on a slow and steady process, it actually gives extremely fast results comparatively with the other two. A practice section. Really finding the things in the songs that you want to play that you don't know <laughs> and that you're working on. Spending that time having a uh not being afraid to sound bad we all have to sound bad to sound good you're not just going to sound good i know that sounds frustrating to people that no one wants to sound bad but you have to sound bad so that your mind hears that and does everything it can to start to make you start to sound the way you would want to sound have you ever um practiced at nighttime before you went to bed and you were working on something and you weren't getting it. It was just sounding terrible. And then you just said, okay, well, it's time for bed. And the next day when you, <clears throat> when you got back to your guitar and you started playing, all of a sudden it happened. It sounded better at least, you know, or, or whatever the lick or whatever the chord, whatever it was, you're playing it now. Have you ever noticed that? This happened to me many times. And the, that, playing these things that aren't that aren't there yet and playing them over and over again your mind is working your mind's working overtime and especially while you sleep you know sometimes you can figure some things out in your sleep that that it's really it's kind of freaky to tell you the truth you're not even thinking about it. you may be dreaming about it. you don't know but back in there 
your mind is kind of going over, well, what was it that I did? What can I change? What can I change? So, so that, that, that practice section is extremely important. And I know it's, it's tough, especially when you have something you're frustrated, you're trying to learn, it's not coming. It reminds me of David with his, with the chords, because David really loves scales and we're working on, uh, bringing those chords up to speed there so that that overturn of that eventually and we're seeing results now so which is wonderful uh and then the play section is the opposite of that it sounds great you know it sounds wonderful you could be just playing just having fun you know remember that the guitar is for fun it's for fun for you and it's for fun for everyone else um it's hard to get it's easy to get bogged down with all the the, the little things but they only last for so long you get past them so the play section is important one for repetition and two for it sounding good and repetition is so important we're going to talk about that in the next section uh, combining songs with lessons about that technique this is one of the ways that we can approach the guitar in a different way song dominant so say you're the type of person who wants to learn all those songs that wants them you need to take some time to find the songs that are appropriate for where you're at but they start to push you it's not easy to do it's easy to find a bunch of three chord songs but if you can already play three chord songs that's not pushing you but at the same time you don't want to go start learning anything malmstein or something like that after that you have to find songs that are in your wheelhouse but are pushing on that next level and so how do you do that guidance ask questions from people that you trust and try them out now then i've had people that i've trusted have given me suggestions and it didn't pan out for me but i tried them out and and see use it in your practice for a week and see if you're if it's helping or not see if you don't fall into that ditch and that's one of the things that youtube is really good for is trying out some teachers which is honestly their reason for putting the content out there in the first place that's the reason that they put free content out there so you can see how they teach and see if that if the way they teach works for you um they want to take you to the next step past the videos that's the whole reason that they put them or they want to get so many people there that that um you know they can make their living just from the free content but for most of them they have if, if you go to their sites they have some place where you can take go to the next step and that's that's where they're coming from so if you know that in advance you can take the next step if you want but you get the you get to try out different um suggestions from different teachers and you might be able to find okay well here's where they have an intermediate section that's where i think i'm in i think i'm intermediate and here's the songs that they're playing for that um and that might be put you right there in that spot where you're handling the song but there's some things in there that push you to the next level or like i said ask people that you trust some some players that you know always a great uh just just be in contact with as many players of your instrument that you can just it's it's very valuable but what i like to do is flip that around i like to do it the other way i like to teach the technique and then reinforce those techniques with the songs that will use it use the songs as bolstering a roadmap a roadmap and the songs are the examples for the roadmap it's really it's my preferred way to go and here's the reasons why it's extremely clear it's a clear path ahead which is rare in learning guitar there's it, usually learning guitar is cloudy there's a little bit of it it's because it's so big there's so many different styles of music so many different songs so many different techniques it's it's you're all over the place but when you have a roadmap of skills with it but with the songs as examples that's my preferred way to go um it cures the dilemma that 
I don't know what it is that I'm playing that dilemma that you hear a lot. Uh, you, you are mastering basic skills and bolstering those with songs. You can see each step and then you could demonstrate what you learned through a song to someone else. And the, the last reason why I love to do that is it builds much more confidence. When you're playing a song and you know why it is that you're playing these chords, you're not just mimicking chords, that confidence is huge. And it translates, it communicates. Someone who's playing music who's confident, smiling, having fun, and, uh, and sure of themselves, it's infectious. It's, it's the best way to go. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I want to make sure that you download your free practice room setup checklist. Uh, it's been a, a big download for me. It helped a lot of people out. It's over at playguitaracademy.com forward slash practice. Uh, also leave a comment below. Let me know about your practice routine. What have you found effective? I'm so thankful that you've watched my video today. And thanks for subscribing to the channel. And make sure you check out the other videos in this series. I'll see you soon.